hello everyone welcome back to my channel um <laughs> i came back to uganda well i came back to uganda um in october uh, 2021 yes and there are various things that you know that i've experienced and they're kind of you know not giving me a hard time but i am not so used to them you understand so um those are the things that i'm going to be talking about <laughs> the first thing is making a phone call oh my goodness i don't know how many times my you know my siblings have called me to just tell me annette you don't even call us why why don't you call us <laughs> of course sometimes inside my heart i'm like why don't you call me <laughs> But you know, these are my siblings, so <laughs> it's not about uh, you should call first or what, you know, it's all about checking on each other, right? <laughs> I am not used to calling people. I am not used to calling people. I've been in the UK and I think I've received only, you know, about, you know, maybe one phone call in the entire time, or one official call the entire time I was in the UK. I was in Japan and I received about maybe five, for four years, you know, I spent there. I received about maybe five calls, four years, only five calls or ten calls, you know, that were official. So I'm not used to, you know, to making, you know, phone calls. I mean mobile, you know, uh, telephoning uh, or using mobile devices. I am not used to that, you know. So, you know, uh, my brothers call me and my sisters call me and they're like, eh, Annette. You are the person who doesn't call, you know, for months. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I totally forget about calling. The only thing I know is WhatsApp, social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, and all that. And of course, I only have my siblings on mainly WhatsApp, and we talk via WhatsApp. So if I check on them and I say, hey, and I just noticed that they are really fine or doing well, it can take me ages, not ages, but months to call them. I'm so used to WhatsApping them, not calling, yeah. Even some friends of mine, you know, uh, there is one teacher of mine who, you know, um, he was my high school teacher. He calls me, you know, sometimes, and I'm like, oh my goodness, how come he's the one who is always calling me? That's not fair. I should call him. I should call him because he's not so active on WhatsApp, you understand? So he is so active on mobile calling let me say he's i think he's more used to calling people directly but i am not used to calling people directly so sometimes i feel bad when he calls me because i feel that you know it's not fair i should also you know try to to call him or call my friends back if they do call me yeah it's good, it's better that way yeah yeah, so uh, that's, that's a challenge to me and, I, and I'm trying my best, you know, however much I try to write all their names down that, okay, I think I should call them after two weeks, I end up forgetting. <laughs> I end up forgetting, <laughs> forgetting the phone calls I should make to check on them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I try to explain to them and I, 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 I hope they do understand it, yeah. But it's still a challenge for me. I mean, phone calls, yeah. Well, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll do my best and I think I'll finally get used to making calls, you know, so that I can check on them frequently. Then uh, the other thing um, is about um, people asking me whether I'm a Ugandan or not. When I visit, you know, uh, some universities or when I go to some offices, creating accounts and all that, some people ask, are you Ugandan? It's like, yeah, I'm a Ugandan. Where do you come from? Masaka, give us your national ID. Let us see your name. I give it out. And some of them are actually, you know, uh, so serious with, you know, with their questions. And I'm like, so why are you so serious? Can't you just say, are you Ugandan? Where do you come from? May I have a look at your national ID? Some of them tend to be so serious. And I'm like, hmm, come on. <laughs> I don't know why some people tend to be serious, you know, when they're asking about your nationality. Yeah, and then they ask me, uh, so, are you Ugandan? When did you have your national ID? And I was like, I got my national ID when I was at my high school. 
and did you grow up in, did you grow up in Uganda it's so like yeah I grew up in Uganda and I come from Masaka and they're like which part of Masaka are you coming from and I mean when you reach that point I'm already exhausted not exhausted but I'm already tired of answering you that's what too much you are not from the immigration right and if you are the immigration that's what too much just have my national ID don't ask me any other questions because everything is there if I give you my passport, you can have all the information about me. <laughs> Don't ask me so many questions, please. <laughs> it's okay if you ask me, but don't ask me so many questions. So which part of Masaka do you come from? Do you have kids? Are you married? What's your status? <sighs> that's, that's a bit way too much for me. I mean, if I have filled all that information in the form, then why do you have to ask me again? understand why do you have to, why do you have to ask me if i were or i was raised in uganda i've said i grew up in uganda and i finished my primary and my secondary school here in uganda what else do you need so people just ask so many questions and i'm like oh i'm actually tired of answering but i have no option you understand yeah it's not funny it's not funny when you are when you were asked so many endless questions just for someone to prove that you know you were ugandan you were born and raised in uganda but of course you know uh sometimes you don't have an option you just have to explain yourself and just be like oh i really hope this finishes so quickly and i go i hope this finishes so quickly and i go something like that yeah, it's not funny if you ask like endless questions to a person. Well, for me, I don't like it. Ask me my name, my, ID, my, my nationality. If you don't believe, ask my passport. I always have my passport or my national ID. I just have to present that to you. Find all the information there. Instead of having my national ID, asking me all those questions, and then even after getting the national ID, you still ask me a train of questions. The next thing that really, you know, uh, that I don't like so much or that's somehow a challenge to me is, you know, waiting. Waiting for hours in the bank and then you see new people coming in, they get served, they go and then after they start calling the number and then you see other people coming in, getting served and they go out and you're like, huh? What's going on? So I don't like that disorganization. It just, you know, pisses me off. So I recently went to a bank somewhere there. And, you know, um, we were many, actually. We were many. And they, you know, they indicated that. They are following, you know, the numbers, you know. You enter, you get that paper, and then they call your number. But I noticed that there were many people who were coming. They, go di they, they pass on us. They go directly to the, to, to the window. They start talking and, you know, the person starts, you know, uh, giving them attention. They get served and they leave. And I'm like, so who are we? Uh, aren't we customers to this bank? <laughs> don't we have to get served or we don't want to be served and go home? I just didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like it. And also, you know, going to maybe a restaurant and, you know, people find that you are in a queue waiting for something maybe going to the toilet and all that and some people just pass on you and they go to the toilet and you're like should i smack them no you can't what can i do Ooh. <laughs> why don't people queue when they see that we are in a line oh i don't like that i don't like of course there are some things that are really tiny but you're like why can't people just, you know, see that we are also, pe you know, people waiting so they can do the same? Why are some people so impatient? They're actually rude and impolite. You understand? You find other people lining. They are in a line, actually, you know. And for you, you just want to pass and just go and, you know, be in front of the door and wait for somebody who's going out and just enter there. You're like, come on, we've also been waiting for that. We've been waiting as well. So you, th you, you think we are stupid? We are not. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that as well. Yeah, so um, I think I just have to get used to it. Yeah, so it's a little bit, you know, 
challenging but i'm trying to understand that okay it's okay we understand these things differently but so at some point i'm like come on these things don't don't you know need us to go to the school you know we can just learn these things you know automatically we don't have to go to school to understand that okay if a person is in line don't pass on them don't pass on them if you are so bad off or if you can't really or if you have a disease that you know your your, your bladder can't you know uh you know hold that that urine anymore or something like that talk to people that i'm really sorry but uh, i miscalculated the time i i delayed it to come but i can't i can't hold this anymore please let me go to the toilet please talk to people they will understand talk to <laughs> i don't know how you'll do that but talk to people nobody likes it nobody nobody likes it yeah to be honest then um the other thing that i find a little bit disturbing is you know anti taxi then uh, the taxi stops people come in with these black polythene bags you know full of you know um, snacks and you know various things like you know uh, fruits let me say uh, bananas and all that and maybe fried things they come in a taxi you know and then they eat in a taxi after eating in the taxi they just drop the things you know uh, down the taxi and some of them just drop them you know in between your legs you might be seated next to that person and what that person does is just you know bend down and just do like this boom they just throw them you know uh below your legs and you're like why are people so irresponsible you know there are small things we can do for ourselves i'm telling you you don't you want to go to school to, to you know to tell you how responsible you must be you don't have to go to school to learn this. Come in a taxi. You've, you know, you've come with all your gummy or your garbage. Take it. Take it home. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. You are not going to wait for somebody to come, you know, to tell you, oh, I think when you go to a taxi, I think you, you, you have to go with whatever you've, you, you know, you've entered with. We don't have such an announcements in our taxis. We don't have that. You know, there are things we can do by ourselves to make our communities better. You understand? And you find that these are mature people. That is related to something that is very common, you know. In Kampala, you find, you know, a very, you know, uh, a very a gentleman, actually, a gentleman, you know, with a suit, you know, and a tie and all that, you know, looking so smart, you know. They take water and then after, they throw the bottle through the window outside. And you're like... <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? You know, for us to make our communities better, we must all be responsible. Do you know how hard it is for that lady or for that person who cleans the road every single morning? Do you know how hard it is for those people to cross the road to pick that, that, uh, that bottle, that plastic bottle you threw? Do you know how hard that is? It's so risky, they are risking their lives, you know to collect all those plastic bottles, you know, to clean the roads. It's so crazy that you still find a mature person, you know, doing such a thing, you know, something that can't even be done by, you know, by a baby who really understands, you know, how, you know, uh, how we maintain our environment, how our environment, you know, our protects us and all that. It's so crazy and I, I find it like, eh. and then, uh, the last thing can be about um, crossing the road. Eh! Crossing the road gives me a hard time. <laughs> you know, uh, there, is a, there is a place where I buy my milk. And I always find myself not being able to go buy milk because I'm afraid of cars. <laughs> Ugandans are rich, by the way. Mm, Ugandans are rich. They have, I mean, almost... Not almost every family, but there are so many cars in Kampala. So many cars. Or maybe they are also international people having cars, driving cars in Uganda. But there are so many cars in Uganda. And you don't have traffic lights everywhere. So 
it's really hard to cross the road extremely hard for me it's extremely hard and i find it so 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 hard so so hard sometimes i fail to go you know uh, buy things i want if they are on the other side of the road you know if it involves crossing it's just hard yeah and it's a challenge to me i just you know hope that i get used to it over time and you know yeah <laughs> and finally i don't know why but you know um i'm learning that um people well i'm not learning this today I, i'm aware of this you know most people you know in our communities are not you know are not that international and it's very understandable i mean you know most of them have not you know been in, you know uh, with various cultures and all that so um when they see you uh, doing something differently or when you wear something like an earring if you're a boy they they kind of say things that are kind of you know inappropriate for example if they see a man you know uh, wearing a earring they start saying um go to hell go to hell you're gonna go to hell and all that so people are very judgmental yeah people are very judgmental of course this is something that exists everywhere in this on this world you know but there is that you know uh judgmental thing or oh, <laughs> the insect was eating me up yeah so but there is you know that character of being so judgmental you know um in excess so when they see that you know you, you have something they start saying oh no that's not acceptable they should be like this if you wear this you're gonna go to hell you are hell you are certain you're gonna go you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna experience this so i don't know when people you know started you know judging who is going to hell and who is going to go to heaven i don't know that but that indicates you know um a high level of uh primitivity yeah people are so primitive yeah but you still have to understand that you know uh that's how people take the world they have not you know they don't have so much exposure they have not mingled with so many cultures they only know their culture you understand so when they see something that is you know maybe that is something something from another culture or something that is you know done everywhere they don't see it as something normal they start saying it's abnormal and they tell you how you know satanic you are how abnormal you are and how you're going to go to hell i find that strange 